Early on, in, when we were all still in uncharted territory, I learned the hard way that uh, the only way to make a sign spinner not a target is to smile. Because if you frown, you are ready, the world is ready to pile on you. Get a real job, you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I like Sprint better. You're like, <laughs> like, like, you know, and so, but, but when you're out there and you're smiling and displaying, and I'm serious, like even the minimal level of skill, even the most minimal, and you do it with joy, you are such, you transform from a target to a community hero. Like it, like, and I really, I really believe in sign spinning's ability to change the temperature of a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. In that like, probably half the people you see on any like residential area corner live there, right? Yeah. And when I can, I, I definitely interact with one person and their neighbor and their, and their roommate and, and it becomes this, this shared experience that it, it's effervescent. And it's like, did you see that today? Oh, you didn't. And it's like this, it's this way of providing uh, a, a loose spark of joy. Exactly. That, and that people say like, you know what? That person took this job and made it into something that they appreciate about themselves. Because, you know, yeah. I, I do. I appreciate this is, being yeah. a sign spinner as, as a part of myself. And people see that and they say, I wish I did something like that in my own. I, there's a stand-up comedian and he says, I wish I loved anything as much as kids love bubbles. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is incredible. And it's not because, <laughs> Joey, you said, Oh yeah, no, Justin. I think of him as like the Saul wit of spinning. That's a new right? one. I'll take yeah, it. I think, but, oh, but it's not. It's not. This. It's. I don't think it's in the formal dimension of of uh, the craft of spinning, right? As much as it is a level of self reflexivity about what spinning is like and can be, yeah. right? So your thoughts about spinning um, uh, and being able to understand it socially, right? And in relationship to self, display a self-consciousness that we usually associate with art. Yeah. Right? And with LeWitt belonging to the apex of a modernist art and by modernism, I would say modernism defined as self-reflexivity, right? So the ability for art to question itself, what am I, right? But I like getting into this idea about, no, this is you know, joy, right? And to know that, that seeing somebody take that job yeah. and, it, and it really can, it, uh, uh, just the simple thing of seeing somebody enjoy what it is they're doing, and to see them do it well, you know, and something as both physically demanding, but also the capacity for play. I know you said that you were tensentivized, yeah. but there had to be a point where you began to extract entertainment out of this instead of monetary value. I'll, I'll say this, I think, I think the hardest thing that any sign spinner does, and not all of them do, is see their work as important, as an opportunity to impact and influence people. Because, mm -hmm. you know, to be honest with you, there's been a lot of years of the career that I didn't care what was on the sign, that it was about the people. It was about, I have a gift, I have a skill or a talent. It's maybe all of those things. And I see what I do as important because people have told me so. Mm -hmm. I, like, truthfully, 
I, was, I, I spun a Melrose and La Brea for a very long time. Uh, I had a person approach, I had a couple approach me and uh, there's, so Melrose and La Brea, oh, yeah. spun for the Jiffy Lube right there. Yep, I, and there, I know Melrose and La Brea. I haven't yeah. seen this on Santa Monica and, and, and there was right a there. Chipotle across <laughs> the street. And uh, a person, a couple came up to me and they said, hey, I'm so glad you're here today because I need to tell you something. When I, we came to Los Angeles two years ago and we had no money, we had no place to stay. Everything was awful. We were sleeping outside and we were at Chipotle and we were crying and just not knowing what to do. And I was, of course, unaware of all of this. And they looked up and they looked at me and I was doing the rowboat. And at that moment, they said, everything's gonna be okay. And I don't know that story except for the fact that they had to tell me I didn't ask for that. That's what leads me to believe that it's true. Yeah. And when you see the opportunity, like if you get 10,000 people a day, what do you do? Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't convince them of something. You can't sign petitions. You can't do 10,000 of anything. You can mm -hmm. make 10,000 smiles in a day. And that mm -hmm. is the most important, the most difficult thing, I think for artists too, yeah. Uh, there's, there is that threshold where it's like, oh, I've been painting for 10 years, but it's not really any good. Mm. You have to, when you take your gift seriously and view the importance of your own unique value and like, this is what I do whether I like it or not. Right. Like, and you see it and you say, this is what's important. This is what, this is, this is my opportunity right now. It's a small opportunity, it's a big opportunity. Who knows, who cares, it's mine. And so we go out and we do it. And I think that as far as drawing, like going from the 10 incentive to something more personal is when I realized how powerful sign spinning is, not could be, how powerful it is as a, it's like, a false, it's a false medium. Yes, it's advertising, of course it is, and it's very effective advertising. But more importantly than that, it's a communication. Mm -hmm. Advertising, sure, communication. Right. And communication. Right. Like that, that's, that's like the thing behind it. And that's one of these, that's what these truisms, that's what makes it so interesting is because when you combine that joy and that, that ability to communicate with these truisms of sentences of, on conceptual art, it says something like, I believe. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, I, I, I have to, I have to, you know, and I mean, I'll be honest with you, I've sold million dollar houses on a, on a sign spinning. Like they've, they pulled up and said like, I bought a house because of you. I'm like, you really, really shouldn't make large financial <laughs> yeah. decisions yeah. based on a 24-year-old with a piece of plastic, okay? But thank you. Thank you for letting me know. And it's that, it's like, what, what greater testimony can you have? Like, it's yeah. a statement of belief. And these, and these beliefs and this understanding conveys the truth of it all. Mm -hmm. about art, about, about Saul Witt and his approach to art. Yeah. It, it, there, is, there is something undeniably true that it's not even worth describing as long as you recognize that it is. Mm -hmm. You know, the performance has to be rooted in truth. And I, I, in, in watching what you do, it, it, the true or falseness of it is suspended in favor of it what what is <laughs> you know so and that is is has more to do with like a level of investment you know and i think that that's the if i were going to peg the truth to something right we don't think about the truth in terms of degrees <laughs> uh but that level of investment and you can feed you know it, it it transmits like you were saying something to me that 
I am going to, you know, describe as true, you know, in terms of like an investment of, of feeling or commitment, you know, behind um, the moves, the tricks, but there's something more than them being simply moves or tricks. Like you're saying, you have to put this other thing aside and you, the way that you're committed to something. So I don't know if truth, 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 um, alongside of that, I guess, would be commitment and just watching you move and try and maintain this thing, hold this thing, flip this thing. It's like, you know, uh, you seem committed. To that point, I, I would suggest that commitment comes from belief in that you cannot commit to what you do not believe in. Right. And you cannot believe in what you are not aware of. And given our linear progression through gaining knowledge and all of those things, as our awareness increases, our ability to believe expands and those, those beliefs reveal themselves as opportunities for commitment. Mm -hmm. And so it is, I, I, I think in, in, in going back to about like seeing sign spinning or being an artist as important, it's a process of believing it to be. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, it's not. It's mm -hmm. one of those Peter Pan things. It's, uh, if, if, you, <laughs> if you don't believe, it's not. Yeah. But all it requires is, you know, and I, I was not prepared to take this to faith in sun spinning today. No, but, no. But, uh, but here we are. Um, well, even at the first statement um, of the sentences on conceptual art, conceptual art, Artists are mystics rather than rationalists. I would say You're telling me. that <laughs> that opens up more than enough space for those kinds of speculations yeah. right, about what you do. And in terms of belief, commitment. Uh, but I like what you were saying about the increase in opportunities, um, you know, perhaps getting older. And part of that being increasing the number of opportunities for me to believe in things, yeah, which is very, very beautiful. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I have a, a working theory about how I approach things in life. I'll share it. It is success comes from consistency, comes from commitment, comes from belief, comes from awareness, comes from education, comes from searching, comes from asking, comes from wanting, comes from knowing yourself. When you know yourself, you know what you, you learn what you want, you learn how to ask for what you want, which leads to education. Your education leads to awareness, which creates beliefs that you selectively choose to commit to. The, out of those commitments, you are consistent with a few of them, and that is where you are successful. Wow. Oh, the one that comes to you. Here we go, ready? We can do it again. Here we go. Yeah.